for different times, and so we have to do things in different ways. Uh, but we appreciate those of you today to come. There will be some others that will be the service later on in the day. And I so say them, I will say thank you uh, for their presence and their support as well. As we all know, look, our purpose here today is we have gathered in this chapel uh, to remember a life, a life well lived. And any life well lived is a life that is worthy to be honored and to give praise to. There's nothing wrong with giving praise uh, to for a life, for a good mom, uh, a good neighbor, a good friend. And so that's what we're here today. And so here, as we remember the life of Marjorie Clifton uh, Wallace, uh, we know that she began her journey 89 years ago. That's a, I tell you, that's a good, long life. And when she was born in uh, Johnston County to the late Paul and Floyd uh, Clifton, during her earthly journey, she met and she married uh, Delbert Waverly Wallace, who preceded her to death. But now they are united together as one again, along with their uh, uh, sons, baby boy Wallace, and also Keith to um, be with the Lord not too long ago. In addition to these two sons, Delbert Martin brought into the world, they also brought uh, Christopher, Chris, uh, and who married Sylvia, and their daughter Debbie, uh, who married Martin. Uh, Linda, his wife, had remained a valuable part of the family. Now understand she has been a great caregiver and support during these most difficult last days of Martin's life. Of course, we can't live out the grandchildren. Uh, as, grand, as a grandparent myself, I understand the value and the preciousness of these little ones, no matter how uh, old they are, no matter how big they grow. Uh, and grandma decides they're all little children, and they're all precious. Uh, Marjorie was blessed with four grandchildren, Michelle and her husband, Brian, uh, David, Caitlin, and uh, Karen Spiney. In addition, uh, she was blessed with a great-grandson, Jacob Colton Perry. In addition to her husband and sons, Marjorie was also preceded in death by her brothers and sisters, uh, P.L. Clifton, uh, Emma Jean Lambert, uh, Ethel <coughs> Clifton, and Judy Smith. Uh, Harold uh, Clifton, uh, her brother, who could not be with us today because he's uh, recovered from surgery, uh, is a long surviving brother, in addition to several nieces and uh, nephews. Uh, Marjorie worked in the daycare with uh, in the country and was a member of Friendly Chapel Pentecostal Free Baptist Church. And again, as I stated as we started, a life worth a life, a life well lived is a life worth remembering and celebrating. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to celebrate uh, 89 years of life. We're going to celebrate uh, the goodness of our life. And uh, there's going to be, uh, along with some tears along the way, uh, hopefully there'll be some laughter. There'll be some joy in, uh, in, in all of this. Uh, may I understand this war machine is ready to go. And you know, the Lord helped me to be ready to let him know as well. And so with that, oh, we want to pray. Uh, and as we pray, I, I like praying scripture. I, I think that is an important thing because I learned uh, over the years as a, as, a, as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you pray the scriptures, you don't go wrong. Uh, you can't get it wrong when you pray the scriptures. You can't pray the wrong thing. You can always pray for the will of God to be done. And the scripture I often like to use as a foundation for prayer is that great song that David wrote, uh, the 21st Psalm. So let's pray this song. Lord, you are our shepherd. You are the great shepherd, the sheep, the chief shepherd, the mighty shepherd. We thank you, God, for being that shepherd. And because you are our shepherd, Lord, we shall not leave. And so today, God, as we come here in this place and we look to you as the shepherd of our soul, we want to give thanksgiving to you today, God. First of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for those great pastures that you have led us to and caused us to lie down in. And Lord, feed from those shot green pastures to the point that we, Lord, are satisfied and being nurtured, God. We want to thank you, Lord, in troubles and times. You lead us, Lord, to those waters that have been still so that we can drink deeply from them and we can enjoy the blessings of our God. 
Father, we also want to thank you as our shepherd, Lord, for restoring our soul. Because, Lord, all during life, Lord, when we first meet you, Lord, you met you, Lord, then our soul was restored. But during that journey, Lord, and I'm sure Miss Marjorie felt the same way, as she needed restoration to her soul. And so, Father, we thank you for those times of restoration. And we're also very grateful, God, for those paths of righteousness that Miss Marjorie, she tread upon. And, Lord, she laid, Lord, God, more ruts to that well-worn path that had been followed by many people over centuries of time. And so, Father, we're so grateful, and so thankful, Lord, that you give us paths of righteousness, right way of living. And, Father, it's all for your name's sake. Lord, we are also very grateful that when we find ourselves walking through those deep, dark valleys that David called the shadows of death, and Lord, and they're dark, and, and the, the shadows come upon us, and, and we lose sight of, Lord, where you are. We lose sight of where we are. And Lord, but yet, in the midst of those shadows, in the darkness, and the unknown, and fear tries to encroach upon us, we can hear the great shepherd whisper in our ear, don't be afraid, because I'm right here with you. Thank you, Lord. For those rods and those staffs, Lord Jesus, that, that you have, have used, oh God, to fend off the enemy, Lord, that comes against us. And also, we go on our own wayward ways, Lord, that you take that staff and you can pull us out of places of danger back, Lord, from harm's way into the closeness of your comfort. Thank you, Lord, that you in the midst of this wilderness of your traveling, God, you prepare a table before us in the very presence of our enemies, Lord. So we thank you for that, God, that you nourish us, Lord Jesus, and parched in the very land. We're also very grateful, oh God, that you anoint our heads with oil. Oh God, Lord, and, and, and many people see this in different ways, but I always see it as the power of the Holy Spirit. That you anoint us, oh God, with that divine protection, covering us. Lord, from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes, thank you, God, for that anointing presence. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the cup, that wonderful cup that you have given to us. Lord, that overflows with your blessing, Lord Jesus, and that you offer to us, and we can just drink, oh God, from that cup of blessing. Thank you, Lord, for that that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, that we can make the proclamation that your goodness and your mercy have followed us all the days of our lives. And just as it was with Ms. Marjorie, so it is with us that one day we're going to come to the end of our journey. This earthly life is going to be done with. And then we've got the hope that we're going to dwell in the presence of the Lord and it is going to be for.
one thing where God always reinforces about who God is. And that is God is a great and an awesome God. He's an almighty God. He has all power. He has all authority. He has all strength to do all things. He is always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And part of what we want to do today is we want to praise our God. We want to worship Him. We want to glorify Him. We want to honor Him because He is the great, great I am. So Kate is going to come back and she's going to sing her song for us. How great thou art. Oh Lord, my God, when I Proverbs 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, that it starts like this. Every wise woman builds her house. And I'm not talking about a brick and mortar house. I'm talking about a spiritual home, a spiritual house. A home where love abounds, deep, unconditional love. And building a spiritual home, a home where love abounds, isn't easy. It takes hard work. It takes perseverance. And most importantly, it takes dependence on God. And I know she depended on God. Things were not always easy. Keeping a husband and big strapping boys in line, you know, that took some hard work. Teaching Debbie how to cook, I'm sure that took some work too. <laughs> being, <laughs> being drugged by Caitlin into the woods, and, and, and Caitlin had the, the privilege of being the grandchild that lived close by, so she got some very special times with Margie. In fact, Margie just knew just how to fix peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and bologna sandwiches and cut them just right and have them right ready for Caitlin when she got home from school. Margie was building her house. Margie wasn't afraid of hard work, as we said, and she definitely knew how to persevere. She had a constitution about her. My dad told me that Margie's dad was a constable for the county when, when they were growing up. And he remembers going to Margie's house and her dad having to get up from the eating table to, to go take care of somebody. And I don't know for sure, but that's possibly where Margie's constitution came from. That constitution where the statement is, there's a right way, and there's a wrong way, and there's a Clifton way. And you know what? I, I know about that. I can say that too because I am Clyde Clifton Parish's granddaughter, so I've got some of that Clifton in me. So, But it, it, it had to be done Morgan's way to, to be satisfied, to make her satisfied, you know? Her determination and constitution served her well all her life. And that independence she had served her well. She was building her house. And there's nothing like going to mom's. I, I heard stories of how they loved to see Margie, but then they loved to see Margie, but they loved some of that cooking too. Chris said she could make water taste good, and I believe it. I believe it. And there was a secret that if you saw something covered up with a napkin, you might better lift it up and get your taste out because it was going to be good. Margie was building her house. She had such a humble and loving and kind spirit that some might have thought she was a pushover. But let me assure you, she was Clifton. Yeah. <laughs> that she was not. And she had a way of saying something. When she had something to say, she had something to say. And she had a good way of getting that point across. And that sometimes might include John Brown or I do declare or something like that. Anyway, she had a good way of getting her point across. And sometimes, and I've seen this at church some, sometimes it was funny even though she might not have meant for it to be funny. She was building her house. This house, this home that she was building, it didn't happen by chance. It doesn't happen by chance. Margie depended on God to build that house. I, I, and, and as I thought about that, I thought about all the specifics that God chose to give directions for when uh, the the children of Israel built the tabernacle and the temple and, and even the magnificence of what heaven is going to be like and the intricate details of what it's going to be even from the smallest piece to the largest. Margie's house, her family, and it includes all of you, was built one piece at a time. Intricate details Special times, special memories, love wrapped into 
her mother's arms. All through her dependence on God. Some people are givers and takers. Or take some people are givers and some are takers. And Margie was a giver. She put others before herself. Sounds like a lesson I learned in Sunday school. But joy, Jesus first, others second, yourself last. A good lesson. And speaking of Sunday school and church, she was always, as long as I can remember, faithful to Friendly Chapel Sunday School and Friendly Chapel Church until she got to where her health kept her from going. But even then, her heart, her heart was there. She loved talking about the Lord. She loved talking about the miracles he performed. And you know what? Signs and wonders follow people that love the Lord. Uh, she displayed, to me, she displayed the fruit of the Spirit, which was love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And some of you might say, well, patience is not, you know, but we all have to work on that, don't we? When I think of her, I remember one thing she would always say is, I love everybody. And she meant it. Debbie talked about yesterday how her mama had such a forgiving spirit. When she forgave, she forgave, she forgot. She, she let it be. She didn't hold grudges. And that, that's a wise woman. That's the lessons we need to learn. Uh, when, when you pray for her, you pray blessings upon her. She always wanted to bless others. She would always say, and bless everybody else too. She was building her house. They say a mother's work is never done. As the scripture says in Proverbs 14 and 1, a wise woman builds her house. But I want to tell you the rest of that scripture. It says, but a foolish one tears it down. Don't tear the house that Margie built down. Carry on the work that she's done in you. Carry on the work that needs to be done. Build your house wisely. It's hard to give her up, but if we've got to give her up, Lord, you're the only one we want to give her to. You lent her to us for a while, and we're so thankful that you did. She has shaped our lives. She's impacted our lives in ways that words can never express. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for lending her to us these many years. She was a treasure. And the scripture talks about not laying up your treasures for earthly things, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. You've got one in, up there now. She was a treasure. Lay up those treasures in heaven so you can be with her one day.
what lies beyond this earthly sphere that we live in, until death encroaches upon us, until we're faced with our own immortality and realizing that we are not going to live forever in this world. Uh, that's, that, that, is, that is a sure. And so as we bring this to a conclusion, uh, I just want to share with you some, some thoughts uh, about what happens after this. Uh, as you leave this place, as you go about your life, and that's what you'll do. Not that you won't forget this morning. You won't forget this good lady. You won't uh, forget sometimes her demanding ways. You won't forget her good cooking. You won't uh, forget uh, those other things uh, that uh, you endured about her. But you, you'll move on. But as you move it on, I want us to focus on thoughts uh, as we conclude this on that place that's called heaven. Wonderful place. Now, to begin this, I'm going to share with you a passage of scripture uh, that Jesus shared with his disciples on the eve of his own death. I'm always a little reluctant to share this, and I don't I actually do not use it very much in funeral services because it is used so much. But this is where the Spirit of God led me, so this, this is where I this is where I have to park at for a few moments. This is what Jesus said to his disciples as he is knowing what is coming. He is trying to prepare them, but they haven't listened very well uh, to all the preparation. And so as he's together with them in that what is called the upper room, that they're participating or have participated in that uh, meal, uh, the Paschal meal, the Passover lamb, and what became known eventually as the Last Supper for us that are Christians. Jesus, as he's sharing with them, he can see that they're a little bit troubled about what he's saying to them. And so he just simply looks at them and says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare for you a place. And if I go to prepare for you a place, I will come and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Now, when it, when, it, when it goes on, he says to them, he says that you know where I'm going. But Thomas bless his heart. He says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. For no one can come into the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would also have known the Father. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. So, I, I'm not going to do a, a, a full-fledged sermon, so don't, don't worry. But I just want to share with some thoughts about him. Some based upon these words that Jesus spoke to the disciples, and I'm going to go outside of that for a little bit. But even though heaven is not directly mentioned in this passage, this place that Jesus is talking about, I think we can safely assume it is that place that we call heaven. The Bible calls heaven. And so we find, we might spend all that time debating, discussing about heaven, what heaven is. But we're not going to do that. I just want to leave you with some simple thoughts concerning what the Bible tells us about heaven. First of all, heaven is the dwelling place of God. Notice Jesus said, my Father's house. So heaven is where God dwells. Then we also learn from this that heaven is a spacious place. He says, for in my Father's house are many mansions. That's how the King James translation is. If you actually look that word up, mansions, the literal translation is there are many dwelling places. The original doesn't call it mansions. We, we want to call it mansions. I don't care if it's heaven. I don't care if it's a one room flat. It's okay with me. That, that'll be my mansion. So, so it's a spacious place. It also tells us from, the, from what we discovered about the, uh, what Jesus said here, heaven is a prepared place. He said, I am going to prepare for you a place. Now, I, I'd be foolish to tell you what those preparations are. I don't know what Jesus is 
doing. I don't know what he's doing now. I don't know what he had to do. I don't know what he's got to get ready. But for whatever he has to do or has already done or whatever has been accomplished, he has prepared for us a place so that when we leave this world, we've got somewhere else to go. It's a prepared place. We also learn from the scriptures that heaven is a beautiful place. Now, it doesn't mention it here, but if you go to the book of Revelation, especially chapter 21, you'll discover that it has gates of pearl, it has streets of gold, and it's laid on the foundation of all kinds of precious stones. Heaven's a physically a beautiful place. Heaven is a place of eternal life. And the reason we know that is because God is light. That's an, a part of the essence of who God is. So therefore, wherever God is, there must be light. So heaven is a place of light. And there is no darkness there. Heaven is a place of no's. Think about it. There will be no sickness. No disease, no mourning, which means no tears, no sin, no perversion, no crime, and thank God, all because there will be no sin. Amen. It's a place of no's. Heaven is a place that can only be obtained by faith. For Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. That word belief is the basis of the Christian Ideal, uh, a New Testament idea of faith. So the only way to obtain heaven is through faith in our God. Heaven is a place that only has one way in. And once you get in, I don't think anybody wants to come out. But there's only one way in. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come into the Father except through me. That's what he said. There's only one way. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the skeptics say. I don't care what other uh, religious ideologies try to teach us. I don't care what other faith uh, brings to the table. According to the truth that we have, there is only one way to get to heaven. It is not on Mama's coattail. But I, I, I need to say that, okay? It's, it, Mama was a good woman. A godly woman. A woman to love the Lord. But you ain't going to get to heaven on mom's coattail. The only way you'll get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Amen. Heaven is a place of fulfilled promise. When Jesus said, I go to prepare for you a place, and if I go to prepare a place, I will come Again, receiving of myself that where I am, there you may be. Also, when, remember one of the last things that Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended back to the Father. He said, I'm coming back. The angel said, he's coming back. Paul said, he's coming back. And the churches were proclaiming all these generations, Jesus is coming back. And you know what? I believe he is. Heaven is an eternal place. And it represents eternal life. But on a sad note, heaven is a place that not everyone will go to because everybody won't get it. Thomas. Thomas involved with the Lord, he just didn't get it. He finally did. Thank God. But you know what? I thought about this. There's a lot of Thomases and Thomasinas out there. Amen. Amen. They just don't get it. They hear it, but it can't be. It, it, that. And so that leads me to something else that I could go all day long and not mention that I feel like I had to. Because heaven's only part of the story. You see, if you believe there is a heaven, and most people, when they get to the point of death, most people believe 
they come to that place. There's something after this life. This is just not it. There is that place called hell. I don't bring it up to scare you. I don't bring it up to, to, to bring judgment or condemnation. But if you believe there is a heaven, you must also believe there is a hell. That is reality. And, and when you think about that, you think about the truth of it, you look at and you compare heaven with hell. Think about what I just said about heaven. And there's a few things that the Bible teaches us about hell. Hell is the place of outer darkness. Hell is the place where the worm does not die. Hell is the place of eternal fire. Hell is the place of condemnation. Hell is a place prepared for the devil, his angels, and those who refuse to believe and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Hell is a place of eternal death. Huh. Heaven, hell. Ooh. If you take faith out of it, if you take religion out of it, if you take Bible fucking preachers out of it. And you just lay the facts out. Heaven, hell. Who in the right mind would choose hell? Don't make any sense to me. I almost feel like Moses. As he stood before the people when his life was ebbing away and he had finished what God had told him to do. He stood before the people according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life, heaven, and death, hell, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants they live. Now, according to what I've heard, was Mark who chose, hey, I should chose Jesus Christ. I've chosen life. Hey. Ron has chosen. Many of you have chosen. But what about those of you who Your choice. But this is the truth. And this is the reality. I have chosen to go to heaven. So, I think it's really appropriate at this moment that we bring this to conclusion. Kayla's going to sing. When we all get to heaven, I love, I love that. I love that song. When we all get to heaven, and it's okay. Now, we can't out sing K. But it's okay. If you want to jerk, sing along, sing along. And let's enjoy that thought that we all can have. Amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed.
maybe we can now weep on those that leave us, but yet we've got something to look forward to. A hope that has been given to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. So that concludes our celebration here. We'll be moving to the uh, cemetery in uh, just a moment. But uh, before we do, we want to have one final prayer with you here. And again, I, 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 I feel led to pray a scripture. And you can join in with me with this if you, if you know it. Um, we find that um, his disciples were there together around Jesus uh, one day. And we know Jesus was a man of prayer. And so his disciples came to him and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And this is the prayer. A little modification that Jesus taught him. If you like pray with me, please feel free. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Family, may see those who are busy with you. Stand.